Hello and welcome to the channel. In the previous video, we used macros to add functionality to a dynamic chart in Excel. There is other cool thing we can do with macros and that's to put the chart in motion. So to load the data and move the chart, as we do in Forex backtesting and as the Excel Forex tester works. So for that, we're gonna add another sheet. And I didn't change the name of the sheets, but you could change data or load or something. And here in sheet two, we're gonna load the data from sheet one. In sheet one, we have the whole data set. So this is from data from 2014 up to 2022. Now we're gonna keep loading that data here and the dynamic chart is gonna show that data as it comes. So to do that, I'm gonna come to the Visual Basic Editor. I will add a new module and the first macro will be load data and to know what data we need to load we're gonna have to check what is the last row with content in sheet 2 in in the in the sheet where we are loading the data so let's call it lr and let me just declare that that's gonna be a long variable and lr is gonna be in sheet 2 cells rows dot count in column a excel app dot row that, that's and that's a comma and that's to get the last row with content and now that we know the last row with content we go back to sheet one range and and here's gonna be the range from a and lr plus one so then the following and up to column c because we have data in column a b and c but if you have if you have more data, you just put the last column and of course LR plus one. That's the range that we're gonna copy. And I will continue in the next line with the destination, which is gonna be sheet two. And it's actually gonna be exactly the same. So now we're gonna keep copying that data while this is running. And to check that, we will use another variable. I'm going to use a variable I'll call, um, I'll call it load, load started. So if the load has started, so it's true, then, and this is a new variable that needs to be declared at the module level. So let me come up here. Load started is going to be a Boolean variable. And load started is going to be set to true when we start the load. So load started equals true here, and we call load data. So actually, when we play or when we run this, this tester, this Forex tester, it's going to call start load. It will set that variable to true, and then it will call this other routine. And then we will have another one down here which says stop load where we're gonna set the load started to false and we will have two buttons i'm gonna add them in a moment to start or stop the process but what are we doing while this is uh true when when load started is true so we're gonna wait one second so application and we could use wait but it's better to use the on time method and we're going to have from now plus a time value of, let's say, um, one second, or we could have two seconds or yeah, whatever. And after a second is actually going to call the same macro. And maybe let me put this in parentheses so that it's clear. And here we're going to end the if statement and well, there are some other ways to do that. We could have a loop and, and then exit the loop when load started is not true. Or we could use go to and have a label here to go to. But yeah, that's one of the ways to do it. And now let's add some buttons to the worksheet. And it can be here or it can be in another sheet. I'm actually in my Excel Forex tester, I have it in different sheets. So the, the data load is in a different sheet, which is actually hidden and the final chart which is showing you the data is in a 
is in the main console or in the main um, worksheet. So the first button was going to start the load. And let's write here start or play or, you know, and then we're going to have another button to stop it because otherwise it will run um, forever or until it breaks. So start and stop is going to already added it. Yeah, it's going to stop the work. So if, if we run it now, we start, you see it starts loading the data with a second uh, of uh, difference. And let me just make this a bit bigger. Oh, it didn't stop. Now. And now let's add the chart, and again, it can be here or it can be in a separate sheet. And that's the same that we did earlier, but that's not dynamic yet. We need to link this to, we need to use the offset to take the data. And now it's going to be a little different. So I'm going to use new names. So those are the ones we use in sheet one. Now here, I'm going to call this, um, let's say, date load or something like this and and what we're going to have here is using the offset and starting in a1 comma and here i'm going to just add one but we could and i explained that in the previous video so check that previous video if you don't know how to do it here i'm going to just put one row below from the reference and zero columns and then we're going to use the count a function to count the items in column one, minus one, that's going to be the number of cells with values, and that's what we want to show in the chart, and then comma, one column span. So I'm going to save that, and actually I'm going to copy the same for the price load. And that's actually going to be in column B, so let me change here instead of column A. Instead of column A, it's going to be column B, and also the reference start is going to be B1. Okay, now that we have it, we can select the data range here, so for the vertical axis, it's going to be date load and for the sorry that was for the horizontal axis and for the vertical axis for the price values is going to be price load Okay, so nothing has changed, but now when we start and load the data, the chart is going to keep updating with the new values. And now we see we're getting already the moving average as well, but we didn't add that. We have to do the same process to add that if we want to. So those are some examples where we can use macros to make the charts even more dynamic. And this particular example was a simplified version of the Forex tester in Excel. I hope you learned some today and thanks for watching.